Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to go over um, how I made this optical center punch um, and the two punches that go with it um, and why I made those. Uh, started out with uh, inch and a half round stock. Started out with this in the lathe and I just faced it off uh, to square up that one face and then I started uh, drilling it out and I did step drills. I started with an eighth inch drill, um, or sorry, a quarter inch drill, and then I went up to a seven sixteenths drill. Um, what that does, it just relieves all the pressure off pushing that big seven sixteenths or half inch drill through the through the metal. Um, takes all the pressure right off the tip of it, so you're just cutting with the outer pieces of the drill. Um, and then I didn't need to, but I decided I was going to use a reamer on this, and so I got a half inch reamer. Um, and I used it to ream the inside of this uh, out. So as you can see, um, I feed that reamer only about an eighth inch at a time and then I pull it out, re-lubricate it, um, because reamers need a lot of lubrication. You've got to pull it out and flush those chips out, and otherwise the reamer will just leave you with a terrible, terrible finish inside there. Um, so anyway, I fed that reamer in there um, and finished that hole up. I took it out, flipped it around, and I faced the other side. I don't show the facing of the other side, um, but it's very similar. I put some dupe, some uh, blue dye on there so that I could just give myself some reference marks. You can see that there's an O-ring in there. I'll give you a close-up here. Um, and I epoxied that into place. I don't have footage of me epoxying that in place, but here I'm kind of just rough fitting it. Um, and then I'll take the bit and I'll start a little chamfer in there um, and you'll see a bit that I've custom ground. It's a uh, round bit. It's about an eighth inch um, ra radius on there, or sorry, eighth inch diameter or a sixteenth radius bit. Um, and I just kind of do a trepanning cut into the face of that material um, to create the the recess for that o-ring to go into. Once I've got that fitted up I put it on a uh, I put the whole thing on a half inch bolt kind of kind of like using a, a drive dog and a face plate to turn it only I just used the chuck but when I got it in there I realized the head the bolt head wasn't centered on the actual axis of the bolt so I took it out um, and I cut that bolt head off down until it was spinning true with that bolt and then I remounted it in there and that seemed to take care of the wobble that I was seeing in there and so they got better cuts uh, truer cuts um, and is what I did is I had just center drilled the other end of that so um, just using using that to carry this while I cut it. Um, so then I used some blue die cam on that shoulder or that area where that shoulder was going to be at where I start that radius. Um, I wasn't interested in perfection like down to the thousandth, thousandths but I did want a good a good reference point for that so that I could start cutting that down. Um, This right here is one inch. Um, the overall stock that I started with was an inch and a half uh, minus a cleaning cut of about 10 thousandths. So we're just a shy under a half inch on this major diameter here. And then I just chewed away at that. Uh, I'm just gonna show you kind of some time lapse of that because it took quite a while on the little lathe to cut all that down. Um, once I did that, I started on this this uh, kind of place to put your fingers so you can hold it. And I just kind of uh, I took the bit and just kind of 
chewed that out little pieces at a time um, and just uh, eyeballed those those radiuses and that. Now once I got that close enough that I couldn't do it anymore, I took out some files and I started with a really round, a really rough round file. Um, and I used two different files, I'll give you a close up here of the two, a really rough one and then a kind of a finishing one with a finer tooth on it. I used that rough one to get down, oh, to take down all the ridges and everything. Um, I also used a half round file in there uh, to kind of clean that up and get me a cons a nice feeling and nice looking um, just kind of curvature on there and then I took some 150 grit sandpaper or I took some 150 grit emery cloth and I started cleaning that up and as what that did is it showed me where my real deep file cuts were and that's when I took the second file the one that has the fine tooth on it um, and I would touch up those areas that had the real deep cuts from that rough that big rough file and, and then I just worked up through the grits all the way to a 600 grit emery cloth until it was uh, till I had worked out all the file marks, all the bit marks, and everything. And, and it was it was looking pretty good, so had a real good finish on it. So I took that out, and I just set that aside. When I started on this piece right here, um, you see uh, I made it out. This is a three-quarter inch piece of acrylic that I'm mounting here in the lathe, and uh, <clears throat> I just take and um, I'm measuring real quick to make sure I've got enough sticking out to uh, cut this this corner or this piece right here, the half-inch uh, shaft that's going to go down inside there. Um, then I just face it off real quick. Um, and then I make those cuts uh, and again I'll just kind of do a time lapse of those cuts um, to get us down to that half inch. I'm just doing the same thing with those calipers, just giving myself a line of reference. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I just want it to be close. So once I got it down, cut down to uh, the half inch diameter I needed, um, I took this bit, and I'll give you a close up of it right here. It's really sharp. It's uh, got a real, real pointed tip on it. Um, and I mounted it rather than uh, sideways, like you would for normal cutting in a lathe, I mounted it sideways. And you'll see why here in a second. I used the live center to line up the bit with the center line of the lathe, which uh, allowed me to, if you watch here, I just kind of touch off the face um, of it so I know where I'm at. And then I back out and I use my compound rest to advance it just a few thousandths. Um, and I do this a couple of times and I think I ended up cutting about 10 thousandths deep. But then I just uh, do a straight feed across and I kind of hold it to support it. But you can see, uh, it's really hard to see because it's only like a 3 thousandths chip. But I take uh, a couple of passes like that to cut that groove. I then took this uh, machinist square which was has a level in it and I turned that cut uh, 90 degrees so that it was straight up and down and I used that to the level on that uh, square to kind of know when I was um, at exactly 90 degrees and then I just did a second cut in the opposite direction to give me the crosshairs on the bottom um, then I just cut it off with a hacksaw I don't show the I don't show you me cutting it off with a hacksaw, but right here I just quickly face and this 
that's the top that I'm facing right there. Um, I use a file just to roughly profile it with that, uh, with that semicircle top to give you the magnification stuff that you're looking for so that you can see down through there and it kind of magnifies your crosshairs. Once I had it all cleaned up, I took it over to the buffing wheel and you can't see it right here, but there's actually two, two soft cloth buffing wheels. One that is further from the camera and one that's closer. And the one that I'm using is further from the camera and I use that for things like uh, brass, plastics, stuff like that. Um, and then there's the closer one, which I use for things like steel. Um, but you can see right there, it just it buffs up really quick and it buffs up really nice. I barely had to do it at all. Barely had to buff that piece at all. Um, I then take the uh, metal piece that I had made, this piece here, and uh, I work on it uh, for probably I don't know five or ten minutes on the buffing wheel. I probably could have done it. It was probably done sooner than that, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, but uh, I just run it in every which direction I can with some compound on that wheel, and it shines it right up to a mirror finish. Um, you can still see some of the lathe lines in there, but I'm okay with that since it's going to be my tool. Uh, so once I had finished that, I needed to move on to making these. Um, and I just show you one. I show you this one. It's the uh, it's only about a 30 degree angle and then I made one with a 45 degree angle. Um, and I just have some half inch uh, drill rod, um, stainless steel. So right here I've got the angle set at 30 degrees and I just feed it back and forth and I use the cross slide to feed in about five thousandths, five to ten thousandths every, every time and I just take a bunch of passes until it comes down to these points um, and it's nice and sharp. Uh, I did use um, some emery cloth to clean those up that was backed by a file. I just wrapped a file in some emery cloth to clean those up. So sorry for the light in the background there, um, but when I started in the morning, it was about 19 degrees outside. I started a fire in my fireplace uh, to warm my shop up, and by about 11 o'clock that morning, um, my fireplace had warmed my shop up quite a bit, and it was cooking me out, so I had to open the, uh, the bay door there, the garage door, to kind of cool it off. So I get that cut off, um, I just flip it around real quick, throw it back in the chuck, um, and face off that back end uh, so it's nice and flat. And then I just use a file to put a small chamfer on the back as well, just to break the edges on it mostly. So once those were done, I took those um, and I uh, heated the tips of them up with my acetylene torch until they were cherry red and there's just an old pan that uh, has been sitting out in my um, scrap pile since we don't use it anymore I uh, just filled it with some water for this um, so I heat those tips up uh, of the punch until they're cherry red and then I just throw them in there to uh, harden them off um, I don't show up, but a uh, file skated across them just fine. And then here I am uh, heating from the bottom until I get that straw color kind of up, going up into the tip a little bit. Um, this camera doesn't pick it up too well. You can kind of see the straw uh, color in the center of the punch right before I dunk it in. Um, I go off frame here for a second, kind of looking at it. It has climbed a little further up the, sh the uh, punch than you can see here in the video. So I just throw it in there to cool it back down. Here's just a quick 
example, I've got this uh, old one and a half inch piece of steel and I just put some blue die cam on it and just uh, scratch some arbitrary lines into it. And you can see I put the I put the punch on there. Um, I use a flashlight when I'm showing you guys because it helps uh, the camera see it a little bit better. Um, but you can see it from about six inches above it without a flashlight uh, with no problem. Um, you can see the crosshairs. You can see the scribe lines down below. It's really clear. Um, and then I, I do a quick punch there and then uh, show you a quick close-up of it. Um, and it's perfect. It hits the center every time. So, um, a few questions somebody might ask uh, that I'll answer real quick is, all the ones that you can buy online are either aluminum or brass. Why didn't I make it out of aluminum and brass? Um, <clears throat> one, because I'm probably gonna blue this. Um, I just think it'll look nicer and that way it'll give it some corrosion resistance and some rust resistance. Um, also, I don't have any brass on hand. I've got about a six foot length of inch and a half bar though. So um, those are the two biggest reasons. I just didn't have the brass or aluminum on hand. And uh, <clears throat> this is about the same weight and it'll function just as well. So, and I have the means to, to, use, to turn it uh, versus if I had to make this by hand. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hit like, subscribe. If you have questions, throw them down in the comments for me. Um, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.